Hi, everybody, and welcome to Friday. And we're in December. I, we started in December yesterday, December 2nd, so 24 days till Christmas. I'm not going to cut them down for you every day, but want to mention that. And also want to mention that we're really, really trying hard to get this up at a certain time so you can really see this at your convenience. And I am just really grateful to all the people behind the scenes who are making all this possible. So just, I, I know I've said this before, and uh, the bear with us, and I hope you are, but Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. I love doing it. All of us love doing it. Like, I love writing these things up and everything for you, but I just hope that uh, you can bear with us so we're going to get all this right. And each day we'll be really consistent in what time we get things up for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. So here we are in the midst of Advent. Jesus is, wants to break into our lives. What are we, what are we doing to stop, that stops him from breaking into our lives? Let's ask him now for his mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the way, Lord, have mercy. You're the truth, Christ, have mercy. And you are the life, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, we pray, O Lord, and come that with you, to protect us, we may find rescue from the pressing dangers of our sins. And with you, be set free, that we may be found worthy of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, But a very little while, and Lebanon shall be changed into an orchard, and the orchard shall be regarded as a forest. On that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. The lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant will be no more, and the arrogant will have gone. All who are alert to do evil will be cut off, those whose mere word condemns a man. Who ensnare his defender at the gate and leave the just man with an empty claim? Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of the house of Jacob, who redeemed Abraham. Now Jacob shall have nothing to be ashamed of, nor shall his face grow pale. When his children see the work of my hands in their midst, they shall keep my name holy they shall reverence the Holy One of Jacob and be in awe of the God of Israel. Those who err in spirit shall acquire understanding and those who find fault shall receive instruction. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? This I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate His temple. see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. And when he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this for you? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done to you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the spread word of him throughout all the land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, the, the scripture scholars use all different kinds of tools to be able to dig into the deeper meaning of the scriptures of what the author intended when he wrote all this 2,000 years ago. And some of those tools are called the historical critical method. Now, the historical critical method helps us to try to understand words that mean different things in their world than it does in our world. Words like no. So we think of knowing as something that's an intellectual process, but for them, knowing was an, it was an intimate encounter with someone or something. Remember means to make present um, to uh, the truth is an encounter with it. It's not an abstraction. for uh, It is for us in our culture. But for them, it was, again, like knowing. It was an encounter with something. So these words mean different things. Plus, their culture was different. And so they these, 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 these methods called the historical critical method help us to understand their culture. And then we can get behind what's kind of going on. And so I'm going to apply all that to our gospel here today. And we're in a section of Matthew's gospel where he is, is healing many people of many things. Woman with hemorrhages, cast out demons, raised a little girl from the dead. And here today in the gospel, we have these blind men. And did you find it interesting that they didn't ask him to be able to see? We kind of talked about this a little bit before, but they say, son of David, a messianic term, son of David, have pity on us. Why did they say that? Why didn't they just simply say, Lord, help us to be able to see? Because they believed in those days. The reason why someone was blind was because they did something really, really bad. And because they did something really, really bad, they were blind and they could not read the Torah. It was God's punishment. We still think such things today sometimes, that they were being punished by God, couldn't read the Torah. And so when they say, Son of David, have pity on us, they're asking Jesus to remove the sin or whatever it is they've done that's making them to be blind. And so in one sense, they are saying, you know, uh, um, um, help us to be able to see. And so Jesus asks the big question. This is the key now. This is the key. Do you believe I can do this? Now, here's where we get into the revolution of Jesus versus what they believed and what Jesus was teaching. And here's a quote from uh, John Cragen's book, his commentary, where he says, this account must remind believers that faith consists in much more than a list of propositions that one accepts and one can recite at the proper liturgical occasion, kind of on, a, on an automatic pilot half the time, too. Faith is first and foremost acceptance of a person. Believers ground themselves in the person of their God and thus then prepare to accept the articles of faith. Who finally is this person to whom believers commit themselves entirely. Perhaps the two blind men serve as a fitting response to this question. They are rooted in the person of Jesus, the Lord and the Son of David, not in some religious propositions. And because they're rooted in a person, Jesus asked, you believe I can do this for you? Yes, it's the faith in a person, a relationship with a person. He shows mercy and brings sight. He heals them and brings them sight. And, and the first reading today uh, tells us what the Messiah is supposed to do. And here's Jesus, the Messiah. It says, And out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind too shall see. The lowly shall find joy in the Lord. The poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant will be no more, and the arrogant will be gone. And they meet this person of Jesus, and all these things begin to happen. Now, there's one uh, second part of all this. Jesus warns them at the end not to tell anybody about all this, and they go out and they tell everybody. 
You know, why, why did they ignore Jesus so much? Well, or why did Jesus tell them that might be the better question. Because he doesn't want them to get the wrong idea. They're looking for a political, military, uh, nationalist kind of a figure to restore Israel, kick out the Romans. Jesus didn't have any of that in mind. And so he's trying to get them not to get a wrong idea of who he is. So he tells them to be quiet until they begin to see a much deeper understanding of who he is in all this. So, the little explanation about that. And again, as he has done all the way through, he just just shatters their preconceived notions all over the place. Here's my questions for my one question for today. How will Jesus heal you of your spiritual blindness? Your spiritual blindness here this Advent. So God bless you and thank you for joining us today. I'm so grateful. See you this weekend, by the way, second Sunday of Advent. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of things to give you, a lot of things to do. Looking forward to seeing you. And those who can't join us at Mass and our Mother of Sorrows, we'll be glad to see you right back here once again. Goodbye now.